this is Jeff with GoEngineers Tech Support. In this video, I'm going to show you how to duplicate existing SOLIDWORKS toolbox components in order to add additional content to your toolbox. And uh, one advantage of doing this is that you can manage the co uh, configurations and the toolbox configure. Also, when duplicating components that have auto sizing capabilities, uh, the new copied part will inherit these capabilities. So in this example, I'm going to take the uh, basic hex nut and create a basic lock nut from it. Uh, so first uh, on here, all I need to do is copy the hex nut and I've created a folder for my parts and nuts so that I can distinguish my custom parts from the ones that come with SOLIDWORKS. So we'll just right click on this nuts folder and paste that in there and you'll see that we got the copied part now. So I'm just going to rename the file that's going to be associated with this part. We'll just call it locknut and change the description to locknut. And you could also add part numbers and descriptions and custom properties just like you would for a normal toolbox component that came with it. Uh, so now that we're all done here, we'll save this out and close the toolbox configure. Now we see that we have my parts nuts and we have the lock nut in the toolbox browser. So I'm just going to open that file up on its own. Initially we'll open read only like it should, but I'm going to go ahead and just add some features to modify it. I'm not going to change the existing one, so I'll use those uh, just to do my little changes on it. So basically I'm just going to add a feature, a revolve feature on this plane too. Um, so I'm just going to do this very generically uh, as the example. And I'm also going to do create this profile using relations in order to minimize the rebuild errors when SOLIDWORKS does create the configurations. So one advantage of this is I don't have to create all the configurations before adding custom uh, components to the toolbox. So we'll exit this, make sure that our temporary axes are showing, and go ahead and revolve the feature in the temporary axis. Say OK. And it's a good sign that the main references don't have rebuild errors. So we can see that when we drag and drop this using the main reference, uh, this will be on the correct side of the bolt there of the nut. So um, we're going to go ahead and save this now. We'll do save as. I'm just going to ac access the properties for this nut and remove the read only. That way you can actually save it and overwrite that. That way we're going to go to use this now and in the assembly. Like the one I have here, we got a bolt just going through a simple plate here. We can drag and drop the lock nut bolt that we just created. And we'll see that we have the option to use the auto size. And it's auto size to this bolt, which is 71620. And we see that you have the star symbol that's indicating that it's auto sized. So if we are going to edit the size of the hole in this plate, Changing it from like a 1 8th to we'll just go to 3 8th. Or that was a 1 half to 3 8 feature. So we'll say yes. Let the assembly rebuild and we'll see that our, both the bolt and our newly created locks nut has been updated. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Again, this is Jeff Jensen with Co Engineers Tech Support.